Hello and welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Supercomputing 24, where we are live on the floor in Atlanta with even more coverage coming from the Cube studios. We got an overflow set of days here. Supercomputing 24 or SC24 is now more than just about supercomputing for HPC. Uh, again, the high performance computing, but it's really an AI infrastructure show as well. And today we're going to dive into some more discussion about how data centers need to evolve to handle sustainability of power and cooling for these new workloads. AI is really power and cooling hungry as we're hearing in the news every day. So <laughs> right now I'm joined by Scott Bills, who's the VP of Professional Services with Dell. Welcome on board, Scott. This is, this is a near and dear to my heart talking about this. So glad to have you on board. Yeah, no, excited to talk about it and excited about the announcements we made this uh, this week around our, our new professional services to help customers with the, the sustainability and AI challenge. Yeah, I was going to say, let's jump in into that because what are some of the key challenges that you see organizations facing in their data centers as you know rising energy costs, growing energy demands for AI workloads, you know, they're getting hungrier and hungrier, and increased regulatory pressure for sustainability, especially in the EU. And I, I think we'll see that in the US coming very soon. Yeah, no, totally agree. And look, when you take a look at your typical data center, 40 to 60 percent of the operating costs is driven by you know, energy costs. And a lot of the factors that, that drive, um, you know, drive prices there are, are beyond our customers' control. Uh, geopolitical factors, uh, factors around kind of infrastructure brittleness and, and stability, and um, you know, they have to control what they can control uh, from an energy and sustainability standpoint. You know, the challenge with you know the power issue is even more magnified with AI and the, the increased power consumption that GPUs drive over CPUs. And they're really looking to understand um, how do we improve um, the, the PUE, the power usage effectiveness of our infrastructure and data center and meet broader uh, sustainability uh, goals as well in response to uh, stakeholders and, and shareholders. Yeah, I, I love it. And I, I think, you know, you, we were talking uh, just a couple weeks ago, but the, the, the you know, how many teraflops per, you know, watt and stuff like that and getting into actually, you know, understanding how effective it is, is actually being tracked a lot. And there'll be a lot of talk about that at SC24 this week, I'm sure. What, what are some of the most effective strategies for improving sustainability in data centers, such as, you know, intelligent power and cooling management, uh, you know, advanced cooling technologies and optimized layouts. And obviously uh, with all the talk in the past couple of weeks has been around uh, renewable energies and even uh, depending on your view on nuclear, you know, nuclear can mm -hmm. be renewable, depending on how you look at it, it's definitely uh, less carbon. But how do you see and what, you know, are the most effective uh, types of strategies you're seeing? Yeah, I think a lot of the levers you mentioned are, are, are spot on, but I think a lot of customers that we're talking with, kind of the first step for them is to understand kind of their, their current performance and, and you know, PUE, which I mentioned before, which is, you know, the ratio of kind of your overall energy uh, consumption uh, over how much of that is being consumed by the underlying uh, IT infrastructure, um, you know, storage, compute, and, and networking. And you want that ratio to be close to, to one as possible um, a lot of organizations are finding that they're not where they want to be in terms of industry best practices and all of the uh, kind of areas you mentioned before around kind of cooling, uh, data center design, hot, cool, hot, cold, lighting. Those are all elements that customers can um, go work uh, to drive PUE down and drive the energy efficiency uh, of their data center. But the first step is to understand you know, where you're at today uh, have a goal for where you want to be in terms of your sustainability goals, and then start to to work some of those design and and um, operational levers uh, to get to, to to the north star. Yeah, no, I, I think again, you know, it's it, this is like I said, near and dear to my heart because you know we all live on the same planet, and you're trying to figure out how do we make this, uh, you know, place you know last as long as possible for the next generation. And when you look at this, really, it 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 is about how you know we can be more effective are you seeing organizations really looking to you because they they find that they have challenge like virginia for instance has no more power uh for data centers are they mm -hmm. looking to you guys to help them understand how to get the poe uh 
I guess you could say, more effective. So in their existing data centers and planning for new data centers maybe that have AI or how they fit AI into that. Yeah, no, it's it's that whole kind of you know set of related issues that we're helping customers with with our sustainability services in particular. Um, it's to help them develop develop an overall strategy and, and roadmap. And the thing I'll kind of tie back to before that is critical is having kind of a, a reporting and and KPI uh, metrics um, portfolio that you're you're tracking and, and managing, um, both to ensure that you're driving the outcomes you want, but also that you're effectively reporting progress out to, to your stakeholders. But we do help with those upfront um, services to help customers develop an overall sustainability strategy. Uh, then a set of implementation services to help them, um, you know make it real and work with them in terms of implementing a lot of the, the recommendations, the options, and then an ongoing set of um, you know, subscription advisory services where you know, we come in on an ongoing basis to help make sure that they continue to stay you know, on their sustainability uh, uh, track uh, that they're looking to drive. I, I think that's that's the key, right? It's not just a one and done type of thing Correct. because the, the workloads are going to, so how do you see and how does somebody, you know, start to engage from, you know, again, you guys just announced uh, the Dell services for sustainable data centers, uh, that new kind of track in there. How do people mm -hmm. engage with you and where, where do they get started? Yeah, a lot of times it's either with a kind of initial workshop that we'll have with them, accelerator workshop, uh, to talk at a high level around some of the dimensions here and how to get stakeholder alignment around that, or it's engaging around kind of our pro consulted advisory engagement. And we have multiple durations, uh, flavors of that, depending on you know the you know, how deep the customer wants to to go. But it's you know really focused on three things: uh, helping them understand kind of where they sit today uh, from a sustainability metric standpoint. Um, their North Star goal, where do they want to get to, um, what's their to be, and then uh, helping develop a kind of strategic plan and implementation plan with major milestones that help ensure that they make progress, as well as a you know centralized reporting mechanism to make sure that you're able to uh, communicate uh, the progress you are making in terms of sustainability goals. And that could be kind of power or uh, energy consumption or other metrics as well. Yeah, because you're, you're talking about the KPIs and a lot of organizations, if they're in Europe, there's a, a wrath of government regulations going on over there around sustainability. And you even have the, some of the sustainability reporting starting to happen here in the U.S. with the SEC and looking at some other regulations. If you're in California or Virginia, uh, there's some stuff there going on as well, uh, particularly in California where it's going to be required. How, how are you seeing, are you helping, the, you know, as part of this, helping them get their KPIs in order and helping them Absolutely. understand? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there's two pieces of that. One is identifying what are the right KPIs that they want to, to track and measure progress against, and then helping them create the, the reporting mechanism, the centralized reporting across all of the different metrics so they're able to easily view that, uh, communicate that out, report that out to external stakeholders. Yeah, because I would assume that that's a big piece of it because I, I mean, really? having worked with uh, multiple different organizations and had discussions with them about this, to actually, you know, they're looking at it as, hey, we have to report out because uh, even though we're in the U.S., we have subsidiaries that are in, in the U.K. or they're in uh, the EU or somewhere else where they have to. And it, it's got to be a challenge because these organizations are worldwide but you guys have that perspective across all of these things and all of those different regulations. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a big opportunity. Oh, it's a big opportunity for us to help our, our customers because we do have that global view. Our customers are largely global. We have kind of the perspectives across um, kind of global markets and, and can help kind of bring to bear kind of global best practices, but also in the context of, of you know, local regulation, local compliance and local requirements around sustainability. Yeah, and, and I think that the power and cooling aspect of it as well, I was just talking to uh, an organization that actually runs a major data center in Singapore. And with mm -hmm. Singapore, you're going to the government to get more power and stuff. Do you see organizations that are running into these localized things where they're like, hey, we have to do more with less because there's no way the Singapore in government or, uh, you know, we don't want to go build our own solar farm because we're not, you know, one of the hyperscalers. 
that has to be some of the questions you guys get get asked and some of the designs they ask for. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think part of the you know the, the uh, push around sustainability is being kind of good global citizens and and stewards of resources. But to your point, um, locally there is going to be a big push uh, for uh, organizations, enterprises uh, to do more with less in terms of of energy. And uh, that gets really down to a lot of the elements we're talking here around data center design, cooling, for example, GPUs taking advantage of our kind of ne uh, new liquid cool uh, kind of options and, and architectures uh, in the data center. Uh, but, you know, big part of this is going to be you know, being more energy efficient with what you have, um, given the advent acceleration in, in AI adoption. Yeah, and it's not like Dell is, this is not the first uh, rodeo with uh, liquid yeah. cooling. I mean, you guys have been in liquid cooling for quite a while. You have a mm -hmm. lot of patents in this space and uh, the direct to chip stuff I got to see was awesome. And I know there's even more being announced this week uh, around that. And like, it's just amazing what you can do. Uh, even, you know, hearing the story about one uh, massive data center that's using gray water uh, as part of the liquid cooling thing where you guys really help them understand what they could, what the art of possible was with liquid cooling as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. It's, it's exciting. Uh, we're su super excited about kind of the new, the new servers we're bringing, you know, to, to market around that. I think that's going to be a big opportunity for customers that are challenged on, um, you know, the energy and, and power front, uh, getting, uh, leveraging that in, in their design and how they're thinking about data centers is going to be you know, really, really important as they think about AI and, and scaling operations in the future. Yeah, no, and I, so, well, but you know, people are looking at this and go, okay, so what does it cost? Uh, so I, I think, for, you know, getting to what are the cost savings, sustainability improvements, and kind of expert support that customers will gain by engaging with Dell in this way? What are, what are some of those outcomes that you look and help that organizations get by in, engaging with you guys? Yeah, a lot of it is around kind of that improved energy efficiency, um, getting more from less from their data center design, um, making sure that they're positioned, not just in terms of consumption today, but going forward, uh, ensuring from a design standpoint, they're leveraging best practices uh, to ensure that their, their energy costs are, are optimized over, over time. And then I think, you know, communicating the broader um, sets of benefits around sustainability uh, to different kind of local reporting uh, regimes, organizations is a, a critical part of to it uh, as well. But I think a lot of the kind of ROI is really around, you know, the, the data center, you know, energy, um, you know, levers that we pull with um, design, uh, cooling, thinking through the right uh, options uh, there and, and how to think about um, your data center going forward. So I'll, I'll ask this because there's going to be a, a lot of noise around SC24, and we like to try to get above that. You know, mm -hmm. how does Dell really differentiate the services it's offering in the sustainability space? You know, given uh, you know you have a comprehensive set of services and packages, but you also have some strategic partnerships, and you're really looking to help them with you know really results-driven outcomes. How, how do you see yourselves differentiating? I think it's a couple of pieces. One is, yeah, the work we do with third-party partners around data center design and making sure that that's optimized, but then also the close relationship that we have um, you know, with our partners over in the ISG side of the house here on the uh, AI hardware and infrastructure side, uh, working with them closely to make sure that as we think about kind of what we're you know, talking to customers about, that we're kind of leveraging uh, the best of what Dell is bringing to market in terms of, um, you know, liquid cool uh, technology, um, data center design, um, making sure that we're leveraging the expertise we have internally here at Dell from a hardware standpoint and bringing it to bear for customers. Yeah, no, I, I again, I, I look at it and I think one of uh, the one of the leaders on the power side that you're working with is Schneider Electric as well, mm -hmm. and a number of those. How how is it working with those industry leaders who see it a little bit? You know, they're they're off. You got to work kind of hand in hand because you're building the stuff that's consuming the power. They're doing a lot of you know the PDUs and being able to help with the power distribution and things of that nature and the metering and stuff. How does that work? Yeah, it's great. Look, we've worked um, with, with you know Schneider for, for years. Um, so a lot of our relationships on the professional services side, our partners, 
we've engaged with and leveraged uh, for you know topics and, and areas prior to, to AI, Gen AI. Uh, it's been the the latest area, obviously that um, you know we're we're deeply in, involved and <laughs> engaged with them around. But it's been a, a, a working relationship we've had for a while. And look, we partner with third party uh, service providers uh, all the time uh, in the services that we deliver our our customers. To ensure we're we're delivering kind of the the best IP, best in, uh, industry best practices. So you know it's a a great collaboration. Um, you know certainly you'll see that you know growing and expanding in the in the future. Um, but it's something where we have a strong foundation having worked with Schneider and our other partners in the past around um, other data center related topics. Yeah, no, I, I think it's key because I, I don't think there's any, you know, I, I mean, I would love to say there's one company that can solve everything, but I think yeah. you guys with the professional services bringing the right companies to bear, the right technology from ISG and being partnered with them, uh, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a winning combination. But for the last word, you know, organizations that want to dive a little bit deeper, kind of where should they go? What should they check out uh, to get a little more information? Yeah, I would encourage everyone to go check out a new blog we're posting this week in conjunction with uh, SC24 announcing kind of our, our newest set of um, sustainability services. Uh, it's a blog by Matt Leibowitz, uh, who's one of our um, services portfolio uh, leaders around uh, multi-cloud and, and data center and uh, has some great uh, thoughts and additional detail on some of the things that we've talked about today around our portfolio. That's, that's great. I, I think everybody always wants to get a little bit deeper in the tech and understand, and this is such a you know, hot topic, uh, not, not to put a pun on heating and cooling, <laughs> but you know, it's really, it's key. So I want to thank you for coming on board today and helping us unpack this. Uh, I think there's going to be just so much discussion of it this week, and I, I think you guys are doing a great job over there. So thank you. Yeah, thanks. Enjoy the conversation. And thank you for watching this segment live from the floor of SC24 in the Cube Studios where I'm at. Stay tuned for more SC24 on the Cube, the leader in tech news and analysis.